For most laboratory operations, the cells needed for inoculation are obtained from either tea flasks or roller bottles. The trypsinization procedure for microcarrier inoculation is basically the same as that used for typical cell propagation, except that it is highly desirable to generate as many single cells, as opposed to cell clumps, as possible. In general, the best results can be obtained by subculturing the cells in roller bottles or tea flasks a few days before the inoculation, so that subconfluent cells can be used for trypsinization and inoculation. For better results, any clump observed on the tea flask or the roller bottles should be removed before trypsinization. The removal of the cell clumps can usually be done by simple suction. The standard trypsinization procedure used in our laboratory usually involves washing by PBS once or twice. After that, trypsin solution is added to the flask. In general, 0.02% EDTA is included in the trypsin solution. During the incubation period following addition of trypsin solution, force is applied to the tea flasks or the roller bottles to facilitate the detachment of cells from the surface. After trypsinization, at least twice as much volume of medium is added to the flask to stop the trypsinization. The cell clumps are gently dispersed by shearing them with a pipette. The formation of foam should be minimized. This can be achieved by avoiding shooting air into the liquid. At times it may be necessary to centrifuge down the cells before inoculation. If the volume of the cell suspension needed for inoculation is relatively high, say more than 5% of the total culture volume, then centrifugation is beneficial to reduce the amount of trypsin being carried over to the new culture. If a centrifugation step is used to pellet the cells, it is necessary to disperse the cells gently after centrifugation to make sure single cell suspension is generated again before inoculation. 